According to Forbes, Boko Haram is regarded as one of the most deadliest terror group and even though in recent years the group have been split into various splinter cells with different ideas and purpose, it operates with the same goals which is to cause destruction and death wherever it goes. But before we know and understand Boko Haram, we must first know the group's origin story. How they came into being? How was it possible for a group to exist in that volume? What made them tick? How and where did they get their weapon? Was a faction of the Nigerian government involved in a conspiracy to prolong the life and increase the volume of one of the most deadliest terrorist group? So join me as we dissect the origin story of the world's most deadliest terrorist group in sub-Saharan Africa and if you've not liked this video, like this video and subscribe. If you've not liked this video, like this video and subscribe. It won't hurt you if you do but it will hurt me if you don't. So help me and like this video, subscribe, like this video and subscribe and let's get right into the video. According to a friend who lived in Medugui all his life and obviously Wikipedia, Boko Haram was formed in the early 2000s, precisely 2002, by this guy, Muhammad Yusuf. And according to him, it all started like a joke then. Malam Yusuf was very very young, probably in his early 30s, when he started his sect. He actually started just by preaching his ideas in his mocks and started gathering a lot of followers within a very short period of time. And according to my friend, who witnessed everything first hand, he said it all started like a joke and it started turning to a different thing entirely. Like um, sharing his devilish idea to 20 people, then it increased to 100, then it kept increasing within the month. It's important to know that Boko Haram in its early stage wasn't viewed as a threat because if you could recall at that time it wasn't the only islamic set with kong beliefs or radical ideas they were numerous in number like the sufi tajaniya the izaha and the rest but we have to ask ourselves this question how was it possible for this set to become voluminous in number in such a short period of time according to reports from eyewitnesses and various publications there were two main reasons for the set to grow or increase in volume one of the reasons are sheer ignorance. The ignorance of the majority of the population to believe what they want to believe and hear is right can be recognized by someone who calculates correctly what the people want to believe or hear. Let me explain further. Words well spoken or well articulated in the right way can sometimes change people's mind and even alter their beliefs. If you ask a person who is a role model or being admired by a majority of the population says anything about his belief, it is most time regarded as the truth or taken as the absolute truth. And that's just the way the world works. The sad reality is that it doesn't matter whether you're rich or poor. And the truth of the matter is that majority of the population are gullible and don't really think for themselves. And that's what Malam Yusuf preyed upon. He created what I would call a cult following for himself. And in my own understanding of cults following or cults um religion around the world it all starts like a joke and for some reason from a small following it begins to expand and where the leader tried to instill his idea and for some reason majority of the population who really can't think for themselves accept his teaching as the absolute truth when the followers start taking their leader's words as the absolute truth they can go as far as killing and dying for their leader Amala Misuf case wasn't different from Jim Jones case where about 900 people committed suicide in the Guyana forest based on instructions from their master Jim Jones. And among the 900 people were prominent millionaires and intellectuals and that shows that it doesn't matter who you are, if you can weaponize the people's desire or the illusions of hope and false belief and emotion, you can go over them regardless of who they are. And that's what Malam Yusuf did and to some certain extent that's what actually most freedom fighters even did take for example nelson mandela where people could die for him based on the way he created himself or based on the way he spoke or the way he portrayed the beliefs the same thing goes with namde kalu fighting for biafra regardless of whether their cause is justified it's just simply the same 
psychological effect it goes in both way both for negative and both for positive and that's just the fact during malam yusuf and boko haram early formative years it was reported that they received prominent people in the society in their mocks usually house of representative members ex-governors and many other people and that's aided in the increase in the volume when a layman in the mock sees that um, a prominent governor is visiting malam yusuf in his mocks where he prays and he sees this type of thing happening he feels a special way or he feels something special or he feels binded to something greater than him and that's just the truth and it made it possible for malam yusuf to pervert the quran and preach or or, or, or or pervert islam it was during the formative years it was more of um, a psychological um attack to lay the groundwork to what was to come so the second reason i could say is poverty that's the second the main reason for the increase in volume of the boko haram from malam yusuf to the present day was poverty poverty is a disease and after we understand that it was one of the biggest tools used to increase the volume of the islamic set we then understand that poverty truly is a disease the promise for a better life after this islamic state is accomplished was really propagated during the time of malam yusuf but in all sincerity it can't be a tool for long because once you can't elevate the or the financial state of your followers after some time they tend to differ from the group and the group tends to reduce but in conclusion i will say that it doesn't have more influence that's i'm talking about poverty it doesn't really have more influence like ignorance and our next reason which is religion in an article i wrote a couple of years back where i argued if religion has done more harm than good in pre-colonial africa i answered simply yes for a fact but the truth is that the strongest bond that has increased a cult or set or group have been religion and the perversion of the doctrinal teachings of islam has been a propelling catalyst for the increase in the boko haram movement so far lastly what further place the boko haram said to have the capacity to launch a full-time insurgency in the northeastern part of nigeria was the funding and conspiracy from anonymous notable officials in the government and the armed forces and that's fact now having understood the factors that failed the group price we fast forward to the beginning of the insurgency prior to 2009 boko haram was only involved in the killings of members from rival sect but in july 2009 boko haram uprising began in the northeastern part of nigeria where over 900 people were killed sporadically during the course of july 2009 and this led to a counter-offensive by the Nigerian army in a move to quench the insurgency. It's really unclear why the uprising started, because there were various reasons, but we can't place any as the true cause for the uprising. And in all sincerity, there is no actual reason that explains the need to kill innocent life, and that's fact. Well, the Nigerian government captured Malam Yusuf and he was killed while in police custody. And this shows that there is probably a setup in the story, the government said, because they said he was actually killed while trying to escape from custody, which to me is just a blunt and lie. In conclusion, after the death of Malam Yusuf, his lieutenant Abu Bakr Shakao took power, and during his reign, he placed Boko Haram as one of the most deadliest terror group in the world. Well, this is the origin story of Boko Haram, and in our next video, we'll be discussing the reign and the decline. Of Boko Haram, notably the main reason why the insurgency is still existing till date and hasn't been quenched by the government. So please, if you've not liked this video, like this video and subscribe, like this video and subscribe. And thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. And please, like I said, subscribe because it won't hurt you if you do, but it will actually hurt me a lot if you don't like this video and subscribe. And like this video and subscribe. Thank you. See you in the next video. Peace.